Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask and Kit. Today we're taking a look at three designer and this is a 400 procedural set of three tool that allows you to simply generate tons of amazing looking trees right inside of Blender. From realistic all the way to stylized trees and this is made available by Alexis and today we're going to simply go through and take a look at some of the cool things that you can now do with it. As this tree has continued had a bit of update it is quite interesting to see what this no sculpting no modeling tool allows you to do by simply working with only parameters and with that said let's dive right into it. So let's simply open up right here how you get to work with this is pretty easy as all you need to do is go over to edit Go over to preference, go all the way to where you have your file path and because this exists as a library, you need to go over to the asset library and include the file path. And once you do that, you can click on the bugger menu, save your preference and close the window. Next thing you need to do is to drag out the new panel and go over to your asset browser. Within your asset browser, you notice that we've got the tree designer plus 400 trees and this is where the magic starts happening. Clicking on the drop down, you'd notice that we've got three different subcategories that deals with realistic trees stylized and also the tree designer materials so for the realistic trees we've got the ash tree the bridge the ginkgo maple oak and also sprouts if you expand them you'd also see the high poly and also the low poly and this is pretty nice especially for those who like to work with low poly stuff at the background and potentially would like to get some high poly stuff on the foreground and the realistic trees are not the only thing that you've got you've also got some stylized trees as well and these stylized tree cuts across the bonsai and also the pine trees. And these are more anime style trees. And you can actually see some very interesting futuristic, realistic and low poly trees all packed up right here. And to work with any of these is as easy as simply going over, let's get rid of the default cube, going over to any of the ones that you want. Say for example, like to play with the ash tree, go over to the high poly ash tree, select anyone, drag and drop. So it is that easy and you can see how much stuff you have with this one. So you can also go ahead and grab something else. So let's simply go ahead and drag this other one out and you can just drag in as many of them that you want. So we'd like to bring this other one in as well. We can go ahead and get that. If we'd like to bring something a little bit skinny, we can also go in and bring that in here as well. And of course, if you like to bring in the low poly ones, you can of course go ahead, click, drag and drop. And that is exactly how easy it is for you to bring things in. Now, bringing things in is one thing, but customizing them makes it even worth it. So to get started, we have a simple ash tree here. And if we simply go over to the modifier section right here, you notice that because this is geometry node based, we've got all of the parameters under a single geometry node. And to make changes to this is pretty easy. Right here, we've got seed, so we can seed these however we want until we get the desired result that we are looking for. And this is where proceduralism bits a lot of things. So in this case, we would like to have a tree like this. We can take a look at that. If we would like to play with the tree height, we can actually go ahead and increase the tree height if we want, reduce the tree height as well. We can play with the trunk width if this is something that we are interested in. And for any reason, we would like to twist this. We can, of course, go ahead and do that. So we can twist this if we want. We can increase the amount of trunks that we want. So in this case, if we like to have two trunks, we can set that to two trunks. And you notice that we're having two trunks right there. I can go back and set this all the way to one. And then we can play with the twisting as well. So depending on the size of the twist that you want across the overall stuff, you can get that. The amount of twists that you want as well, depending on what you're going for, you can also mix these things up and get something like this. This is beginning to look like a bonsai tree and it looks pretty cool. So once you have this ready, we can go over to the waviness and make changes right there. So there is a lot of options with this particular tool that allows you to create exactly what you're going for. So we can play with waviness, we can increase the roughness because this is using some sort of map to actually do all of that. And we can also play with intensity, bring that up, bring that down and see what we've got. Now let's see what this tree actually looks like because you know we've been playing with this and we haven't actually seen what the tree looks like especially in terms of quality so this is basically what you have if you're looking at the tree via eevee let's drag a low poly one so that you can see that as well and this is basically what you'll be getting if you're looking at this tree with eevee and for the low poly one i believe this is still loading so it's going to load up a few more stuff and if you would like to take a look at the stylized ones stylized ones look pretty cool as well so i'm just going to go ahead and bring this right about the point like so 
so that you guys can see what the trees looks like when we are working with them via Eevee. And of course, this simply means that we'll be getting a little bit more of a higher quality when we choose to render via cycles. So back to the tree. Right here, if we have our um, piece selected and we go all the way down, we've talked about the waviness. Within the branch section, you can increase the number of branches. You can reduce the branches. The branches has a ton of things that you can actually do with it. So if you like to play with the length of the branch, you can do all of that stuff. If you like to have some exponential growth with the branch, you can of course go ahead and do all of that. Moving down to the leaves, we've got a ton of leaves that exist right here. We can reduce the amount of leaf we will have on the tree. If this is uh, what we're going for, we don't want leaves on that. We can actually go ahead and make that change. But then if we want to have leaves on this, we can definitely go all the way to the leaf section and we can start adding a bit of leaf to this. And this is beginning to look pretty cool. Some other interesting things here include the deleting of outer leaves and the deleting of inner leaves. So you can use this to control how much density you have with the leaf on the model overall. Now, in terms of the leaf type, there are various leaf types that exist. So if we like to get like the cube, we can actually go ahead and select cube. Let's go over to the shading so that we can see this quickly. So you can see that as the cube. If you want to see these as icospheres, you can also see them like that. If you want to see them as a blob, you can see them as a blob. And, you know, you can always come through and switch them back to single leaf and get a nicer and desirable result. You can also choose to subdivide these leaves if you want. And the leaf also has a ton of other parameters for it as well. Now, one part of the entire tree designer stuff that seems to be having a bit of a texture thing, which I think the creator may likely update after this video, is the flower section. So within the flower section, we can add some flowers, but the flowers don't show up. So I'm going to explain that. So once we start throwing in those flowers and let's say we increase the size of the flower, we can go over to the core and select the core type. Say for example, we want the simple one and then we can go over to the petal or like an oval and we can increase this just to make sure that we have these flowers pushing themselves out. We can also go over to the size and I can do all of that stuff as well. And we can also do a little bit of that. Now, if we switch these to cycles, or if we switch this to Eevee, you can see the flowers, but they are not there as colorful flowers that we want. They are there as very black looking objects. The reason is because within the tree designer material section, we do not have the flower textures in here. Of course, we can see the materials, but some way, somehow, I think the textures have not been ported properly into this particular build of the tool that I currently have. So for the flower section, there's a ton of things that you can do. You can also play with the size of the root. So in case you like to increase, reduce the root size, you can of course go ahead and do that. You can also choose to play with the shape. You can play with the complexity of what the root looks like. You can also play with the vertical complexities as well. And you can throw in wind. This is pretty cool, especially if you're into animation. So we can press the playback button and you notice that we have wind. Pretty cool stuff. If you want to have seamless animation, you can go ahead and turn this on. That is pretty nice. At the same time, you can loop the lens based on frame. One of the cool thing that is uh, nice that I kind of like about the whole twin thing is the falling leaves. So we can simulate the idea of having falling leaf. So what that does is once we start pressing the playback button, you can see we have leaves falling and this is going to be really, really cool to watch. Of course, it will be best to see this in Eevee. So I'm just going to pause this and let's go ahead and switch these back to Eevee so that we can actually see what's going on here. You can see that we have all of these leaves falling. So if we press the playback button, you can see we have nice looking leaves falling. Pretty cool stuff. So if you're thinking about a tree tool that can allow you create leaf falling simulations, this is definitely going to make that possible. At the same time, you can make the leaves disappear if you want. There's just a ton of parameters for this one as well. And you can proceed to play with the trunk, the leaf, the colors of all of that. And there is a brand new outline feature, which is now available. I'm thinking this is going to be best for stylized trees. However, if you want to explore with this one, you can proceed to check this one out. So this is it. Amazing stuff right here. For those who are into trees, possibly you're looking for a new set of tree that you can work with. You can definitely go ahead and check this one out. The tree designer is an amazing tool. It is very inexpensive. And of course, for those who like to see these ones and possibly you like to grab it, 
then I'm going to put this link in the description where you can check it out and check out all of the cool things that this has to offer. More so, you can also go ahead and check out the folks at 3D Shaker. They're currently doing a 50% on some of the amazing 3D tools as well. There is also the Realistic Sky from the folks at V Production. They've just announced this one. It's doing a 25% off for those who are thinking about nice looking sky stuff. If you guys want us to talk about this one, please tell us in the comments. We're going to make a video for you guys if you really want to see how this one works. There's also Claymate, which is brilliant. Now, this is also another interesting tool, which is currently available for those who like to create that clay-like feature in their scenes, possibly to do a before and after look dev-like stuff. This is beautiful. You can come through and check it out. And the folks at Node Interactive have recently created Solidify Plus, which is a beautiful way to actually work with Solidify inside of Blender. Of course, there is a lot of cool things that this comes with. And for those who might want to explore it and check it out and see some of the things that are now featured with this one alongside all of these other ones that we've mentioned, links to this will be in the description. So do well to check them out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.